remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at NDN TV Nigeria. Click on the subscribe button and be the first to get notifications. With about one year left in his eight-year administration, Delta State Governor Ifan Yokoa has in the last five months embarked on a loan acquisition spree, with the latest one being the 150 billion Naira loan, which was approved on Tuesday, the 26th of April, 2022, by the Delta State House of Assembly through a voice vote and devoid of any debate whatsoever on the appropriateness or otherwise of the loan. The action by Governor Okoa and the State House of Assembly is generating mixed reactions from Deltans and calling to question the sincerity of purpose of outgoing Governor Ifan Okoa towards the true development of Delta State. Following Governor Ifan Okoa's loan request application, the Delta State House of Assembly on Tuesday, 14th of December 2021, approved the sum of 20 billion Naira loan facility from Fidelity Bank to finance the state government's 5% equity in the UTM Offshore Limited Floating Liquefied Natural Gas Project. Though it may sound like a good investment, but upon consideration, that the private firm has had no prior experience in the setting up of a liquefied natural gas plant, one cannot but consider the investment risks to be very high. On Tuesday, February 15, 2022, the Delta State House of Assembly again approved another 12 billion Naira loan facility from Zenith Bank PLC. According to Governor Okoa, the loan is to help defray arrears of unpaid certificates earned by contractors working on projects in the state. On Tuesday, 26th of April 2022, the Delta State House of Assembly again approved another 150 billion naira loan facility from Zenith Bank PLC. The three different loan requests were all approved by the Delta State House of Assembly through voice votes and without any debate whatsoever. According to the Delta State Commissioner for Finance, Fidelis Tilije, the current 150 billion naira loan is taken against expected reforms from the federal government to Delta State, totaling 270.6 billion naira. Federal government was double charging oil producing states with respect to 13% remittances. We have to insist that those 13% must be deducted from all subsidies that were paid from 2010 to date. Those funds were expected to be refunded in trenches to all oil producing states, including Delta State. Fidelis Tilije further gives an insight into what the loan will be used for. We will be spending 20 billion naira out of this fund to reduce state pension outstanding of past due. Also, advance 10 billion naira to the Bureau of Local Government as grant to enable them also reduce whatever are standing and the uh, uh, negative impact on our pensioners. There are so many legacy projects that this state government has embarked upon. Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress in Delta State, Ibata Onojeku Valentine, disagrees with Governor Okoa's intention for securing the loan. This indebtedness, of course, is the future of our children and our grandchildren that is being mortgaged by this senseless borrowing. It doesn't make sense. We are not seeing anything on ground. You go throughout the state, there's nothing going on, no project. What project are they talking about? You know, so it's quite unfortunate. Among projects that Governor Kua's administration is hoping to use the loan to fund is the Ugeli Asaba Highway Construction Project. This road project, which is about 162.27 kilometers, was divided into three sections and awarded in tranches from November 14, 2008, at a total sum of 51.3 billion naira. This amount, of course, has been reviewed severally. After 14 years, this 162.27 kilometer road is far from being completed and will most likely not be completed before Governor Okoa leaves office, considering the fact that the rains will soon set in. Executive Director for Citizens Advocacy for Social and Economic Rights, KESA, Barista Frank Tiete, a Deltan, says the series of loans obtained by Okoa in the twilight of his administration and the hasty approval of such loans by the State Assembly only points to one thing, that there is a suspicious collaboration between the Governor and the Speaker, Right Honorable Sharif Oborewori, who is scheming to succeed Governor Ifan Okoa. It is shameful that I do not expect that Sheriff Oboriwari 
would, would oppose that kind of loan, knowing that it would be in his interest. He wants to be governor, and he's favored by Governor Okowa, and so they can now collaborate against the interest of the people of Delta State, against the future of Delta State, to borrow money to fund elections. That is unacceptable, and it will be resisted. It is unfortunate that such an important matter as 150 billion naira loan will not be properly debated, will not even afford a public hearing, but will be secretly conducted in a, a, and then simply just announced to the world that uh, they have given approval. It is the height of irresponsibility on the part of the leadership of the Delta State House of Assembly. Delta State Commissioner for Information Charles Anyago disagrees with Frank Tieti and says that the loans have no political undertone. The season we are in has nothing to do with the decision we have taken. Because otherwise, individuals will begin to think that they are looking for money for politics. We are not looking for money for politics. If indeed the reforms are shortfalls from the 13% derivation payment, why is the Delta State government not respecting its own laws by paying their required percentage of that money to the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, the SOPADEC, to fund development in the oil producing communities? Again, Frank Tieti says the whole loan issue lacks sincerity of purpose. We are talking about a government that has not shown responsibility in seven years, a government that has awarded contracts that have, that have not been completed in seven years, a government that has had money that it cannot show what it has done with all the monies that it has got from the Federation account in seven years. Is it now in one year that it will take $150 billion to, 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 uh, to, to show that there is any development? Look, there will always be uh, reasons why they will, good reasons why they want to take the loan. But we know from history, from experience, as a matter of fact, that these loans are taken only for personal consumption by these unscrupulous, selfish politicians. And that is what the people of Delta should rise up to resist. Already, Frank Tiete has sent a petition to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, which has been received and acknowledged. Titled, 150 billion loan, call to prevent barefaced corruption, abuse of office, and unprecedented squandermania by the Delta State Government, Barrister Tete is urging the EFCC to save Deltans from themselves. Though the Delta State Government has not disclosed the interest to be paid on the loan, it's most likely going to be quite high since it's a bridging finance loan. Also, the loan is taken against federal government's remittances over a five-year period. With the federal government's inability to comply with the payment in the last 10 years, how certain is the Delta State government that the anticipated remittances will come as it went due? Any default in payment as usual will attract penalties from the banks. Should the Delta State government not have waited for the reforms and used them to offset previous loans? Governor Okowa in the last seven years has had difficulties investing in infrastructure for the state as his spending priorities have been focused more on payment of salaries and allowances to his large pool of political appointees, including his over 2,000 special assistants, who do nothing but deplete scarce state resources monthly. Deltans opposed to this set of loans obtained by the Okoa administration are deeply worried that it amounts to mortgaging the future of Delta State and are calling for an immediate termination of ongoing transactions in the 150 billion naira loan sought by the Delta State government. Inside the Niger Delta, 